afternoon. Good afternoon. School of Nursing graduates, families and friends, faculty and staff and administration, it is a privilege to welcome you to the Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing Fall 2021 Pinning Ceremony. We are very excited to be here in person to celebrate this momentous occasion with you. The pinning ceremony is celebrated by a nurse as a way to signify the entry into the profession of nursing after successful completion of their nursing program. And for us here at APU, the completion of the bachelor's degree of science in nursing. And graduates, you can sit down. Today we have several cohorts of students who have completed their BSN program, and I would like to take a moment to recognize them. Graduates, please stand as I call your program. Let's start with our RN to BSN students. Now I encourage these groups to be loud, so. Our entry-level master's students from San Diego, from Inland Empire, and from Monrovia. Our traditional undergrad program here on the Azusa campus. Good job. And our upper division BSN transfer programs, which includes our LVN to BSN, and High Desert, Inland Empire, and Monrovia. We are so proud of you and your accomplishments in your program of study. Now we know you, you couldn't complete this journey without some family and friends. So please turn to those that are around you here and thank the family and friends that supported you. And you have amazing faculty and staff here in the School of Nursing. Let's acknowledge them. Will the faculty and staff in the School of Nursing please stand? Graduates, as, as your faculty and I reflect on the past years, we acknowledge how difficult your educational journey has been in the midst of an unprecedented pandemic and a constantly changing environment. Even today, as we celebrate your dedication, resilience, and hard work, we realize that we are still in the midst of a changing guidelines and a profession that continues to respond to a constantly unfolding healthcare crisis you will have tremendous opportunity to make a difference in the lives of patients, families, communities, and the healthcare system as we navigate the next few years. Your calling to the profession of nursing has never been more important or more significant. We are confident your educational journey has prepared you to impact the health of our nation and our world. But we are even more confident that God is with you in this journey. Look to your faith to sustain and encourage you in the good times and the difficult times. Continue to seek God's strength and wisdom and know that God loves and cares for each one of you. As you start your professional career, you have chosen Joshua 1, verse 9, which reminds us of God's promise to walk our journey with us. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God has guided and supported you over the past years during your nursing education. Continue to rely on that presence and guidance in your life. May God be a cost, constant companion for you along your journey. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Provost of Azusa Pacific University, Dr. Rakshan Fernando. School of Nursing. So, you know, 
I don't have a lot of opportunity just because of the nature of my role to interact with students, but this weekend, this weekend of commencement is a wonderful reminder for myself, for the faculty, hopefully for the family of friends, of the incredible work that we do here at Azusa Pacific University. And I want to remind you, you graduates, very impressive looking right now, but as you have those sashes on, as you go out into the, the world, that you are standing on a legacy, a legacy of greatness. When you are in anywhere in Southern California, in California, even in the nation, and you go into a healthcare facility and you say, I am a nurse from, an AP, from APU, they say, well, let me give you a job. <laughs> so I wanna remind you during these difficult times that we live in, that you can fall on the family and the legacy of APU. That you have been prepared, that you have been trained, not just to be an effective nurse, but also to be an effective and whole person, to be a character-filled individual, to be a leader not just of greatness, but of goodness. Now, we are in a time of Advent, a time where we are approaching the birth of our Savior. And during this time, we are reminded of Emmanuel. And what Emmanuel means is God is with us. And my prayer for you, graduates, as you walk into whatever your next may be, that you would be reminded that God is with you. He is present with you, just like that verse in Joshua 1.9. To be strong and courageous. Why? Because the Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, is with you, is in you, and is through you. And you have that confidence as a graduate. You have that confidence as a family member. You have that confidence as a human being. So despite all of the circumstances in the world right now, which may feel like we're being brought down and being grinded, we serve a God that has conquered he who is in the world. We serve a God that is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So graduates, we're so proud of you. You represent who we are and we're excited about who you're going to become. Not just what you're going to do, but who you're going to become. So on behalf of the university, behalf, on, behalf of Azusa Pacific University, congratulations and may God bless you. Thank you. Congratulations, nurses. I am Sharon Volta, the program manager for the upper division transfer program for the Monrovia campus. Please bow your heads for a word of prayer. Dear God, we are so grateful and excited to be with these students as they, along with you, have achieved this goal in their life. As they go out to their various journeys, we ask that you give them empathy to feel, strength enough to cry, wisdom to work towards solutions for individuals, families, and communities, desire to continue to learn, most importantly, the love to continue in allowing you to guide. Thank you for all the support that family and friends have gifted to help these nurses to achieve their accomplishments and to join them in this day of celebration and passage. In your name we pray, amen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, family, friends, faculty, graduates, and to everybody who's watching us virtually. Welcome to the Fall 2021 Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing Pinning Ceremony. You're all in for a very special and memorable event. Let us start by giving a nice 
Round of applause to all these amazing students. My name is Cristina Alviso. I am one of the two um, scholars who represent the RN to BSN department. M my fellow colleagues standing next to me and I are honored and humbled to be standing here in front of you. I would like to start with this year's theme. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, it states, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. As nurses, we have answered a calling that has led us through this journey and to this very moment. We did not do this alone. The Lord our God has been with us through every moment, from late night studying, finding scholarly, peer-reviewed articles, <laughs> writing research papers, working with group presentations, many of you doing those care plans, and let's not forget those citations using that seventh edition APA format. <laughs> In the midst of all these experiences, we grew stronger because we were not alone. Today we stand here in this arena expressing gratitude and thanking God that we are done. Mm -hmm. At least for now, <laughs> we did it. With this being said, we also wanted to thank, acknowledge, and express our gratitude to some very important individuals in this audience. Alicia. Cool. Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Alicia Dwyer, and I'm graduating with a traditional undergrad program. Today, I'm here to thank the faculty of the schools of nursing, as well as give a special thanks to all the dedication and time they've put into us, especially during this pandemic. These last few years look nothing like any of us had ever imagined, I'm sure. School sent everyone home, and we all switched from in-person to online. Despite all of our academic requirements staying the same for oh, sorry, <laughs> faculty and students alike. So, I want to thank all the faculty from, for all of the things that they've done for us, especially from extending office hours to offering to meet outside class times, and even to personally checking on each of us individually. The faculty at APU have gone above and beyond for all of us. Thank you for adapting to all the changes and being dedicated to preparing us to be the best nurses that we could possibly be. Our faculty have, present, have presented to us and have persevered through us through the grace of God throughout these very continually changing circumstances. We cannot give you enough thanks for all that you have done for us. Let's give the big round of applause to all of our faculty and appreciation. I'd now like to introduce Darmesh to give a warm welcome to all our friends and family here today. Greetings, everyone. My name is Dharmesh Ramea, and I'm here representing the Upper Division BSN uh, Transfer Program, located at the uh, High, Dege uh, High Desert Regional uh, Inland Empire and uh, Monrovia campuses. More specifically, I'm here to thank our families, uh, our friends, loved ones, and of course, uh, our pets. Um, we want you to know that every time uh, we were in a pinch. You guys were the much needed intervention to our nursing diagnosis of ineffective coping <laughs> related to extreme stress from weekly quizzes and multi-page reading and writing assignments as evidenced by crying, <laughs> sobbing, nail biting, oh, the hair pulling, uh, questioning life decisions and just sheer panic. So we want you to know that we can't thank you enough. Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your wisdom, uh, your love and affection. Thank you for those uh, much needed coffee breaks. Uh, thank you for your patience and just for seeing our potential when, whenever we could not. And uh, what's the long-term outcome of your interventions, you ask? 
uh, we did all right. In fact, uh, we flourished. Uh, we've come out stronger than we ever thought. I just want to take this opportunity to thank my wife and my parents uh, for making my dreams of working in healthcare come true. Uh, my cohort did request that I send out a special shout out to Bobby for sending out study guides a week in advance while, while working a full-time job and the responsibilities of his wife and kids. So thank you, brother. I also wanted to thank our, all of our classmates for being the champions that they are and who somehow have become our second families. With that said, I would like to now introduce Cheryl, who's going to tell us a little about our collegial support uh, that we've been blessed with uh, over the past few years. Um, Cheryl, if you will, please. Greetings, everyone. I, too, like to thank the fabulous staff and faculty here at APU. I'd also like to thank my amazing family here to support me. I cannot believe I'm standing here on this stage after waiting 25 years to return to school for my R to BSN. Thank you. My greatest fears of returning to college were quickly erased by the most amazing colleagues that quickly became my closest and dearest friends. Together we bore each other's burdens of sleep deprivation, endless research, and the stress of working long hours and short staff during this pandemic. Each of our nursing cohorts started with students from different generations, backgrounds, and diverse cultures. However, as students, we were firmly united in our goal to overcome any and every obstacle to achieve our goal as a bachelor's of science and nursing degree. Week after week, month after month, we encouraged each other, prayed for each other, and helped each other grow as nurses, scholars, and human beings centered in Christ. As nurses, our calling is not merely caring for the weak and injured or sick. We are blessed with the opportunity to leave our fingerprints on every patient's soul that we care for. According to Mother Teresa, as nurses, we need to give Christ a chance to make use of us, to be his word and his work. If we do not radiate the light of Christ around us, the sense of darkness that prevails in the world will increase. As we stand here today participating in this beautiful painting ceremony, we have all answered God's calling to be nurses to care for our brothers and sisters in Christ. According to Matthew 25, 40, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you did unto me. Thank you everyone, I hope you enjoy this painting ceremony. Welcome everybody. I'm Grace Moorfield, Dr. Grace Moorfield, and I'm the sir, I serve as the Associate Dean for the um, Student Affairs here in the School of Nursing. I want to spend a moment just to congratulate every single one of you graduates as we move forward and talk about the awards. Um, we'll be giving some people awards but you all get an award. And that's the amazing work that you've done and the fact that you're graduating today and being pinned um, in this ceremony. So I just applaud each and every one of you for your hard work. On behalf of the administration, the faculty, and the staff, it's my pleasure to pre present the School of Nursing Awards of Excellence. Before I announce the awards, oh, I already did that. I want to tell you how proud I am of you. <laughs> Today on stage with me will be the traditional undergrad department chair, the upper division BSN transfer department chair, the RN to BSN department chair, and the entry level master's program directors who will be giving out the awards. The first award is the Academic Excellence Award. It goes to the student with the highest cumulative GPA per graduating cohort. In the traditional undergrad program, the Academic Excellence Award goes to Caitlin Hofferlina. In the upper division transfer program, 
The Academic Excellence Awards goes to three people from one from each cohort. Jasmine Crispin, Demas, Demas Ramaya, and Anya Christine Bandon. Congratulations. In the RN to BSN program, the Academic Excellence Award goes to Lauren Del Negro, Lynn Chang, Jantra Benavidez. Congrats. In the entry level master's program, the Academic Excellence Award goes to T Tin Win Liu, Cohort 104, Amish Patel, Cohort 104. Joyce Baxter, Cohort 106. Alexandra Herman, Cohort 105. Congratulations to each of these award awardees for their hard work and dedication. The Clinical Excellence Award goes to a recipient that is an enthusiastic learner who maintained a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or above, demonstrated outstanding theoretically based clinical practice and skills, resulting in exceptional professional care for patients. This student maintains a positive attitude, engages professionally with others, and is consistently incorporated, it incorporates the needs and desires of their patients in their care. The Clinical Excellence Award given in the Upper Division Transfer Program and Entry Level Master's Programs. The traditional undergrad award recipient is Braylon A. Young, <laughs> Cohort 23. Upper Division Transfer Program Award recipients are Justin Hirquese, <laughs> Cohort 26, Jamaica Reyes, Cohort 27, Rudolph Duran, Cohort 29. The Entry Level Master's Award recipients are Janice Castro, Cohort 124, Lynette Gazi, Cohort 106, Sharon Pasimo, Cohort 105. The next award is the Faculty Award. Recipients of this award have maintained a cumulative GPA of 3.0 or above and were identified by faculty as excellent in clinical practice and skills. Criteria include demonstrates professional writing ability and leadership qualities, offers, offers service and leadership on ongoing programs and organizations within the School of Nursing and the university at large, interacts well with peers, supports the instructor's role as a facilitator in the course, and maintain a positive attitude even while fulfilling multiple roles such as student, nurse, friend, spouse, family, member, and parent. In the traditional undergrad program, it's Sarah Gerber, cohort 23. In the upper division transfer program, the faculty award goes to Juan Gary, cohort 26. Cohort, uh, Courtney Murray, Cohort 27, and Dharmesh Ramaya, Cohort 29. In the RN to BSN program, the faculty award goes to Kelly Christian, Cohort 35B, Jacqueline Vicente, Cohort 35C, Cheryl Sierra, Cohort 118, Lul Nagul, Cohort 36, Myra Ferretti, Cohort 112. In the entry level master's program, the uh, faculty award goes to Kristen Straw, Cohort 104, Morgan Furlong, Cohort 105, 
Petronella Getanga, Cohort 106. The next is the Outstanding Inspirational Award. The Outstanding Peer or Inspirational Award is given to an outstanding student in each cohort within the RN to BSN and Upper Division Transfer programs. The recipients of this award are determined by a vote of their peers and include faculty input. The criteria include an inspirational demonstration of scholarship, contribution to class activities and discussions, support for fellow classmates and sound leadership. In the Upper Division Transfer pro Program, the award goes to Mariah Matthews, Cohort 26, <laughs> Mabashir Ahmad, Cohort 27, Lauren Gannon, Cohort 29. In the RN to BSN Program, the award goes to Christina Alvazo, Cohort 112. The next award, the Senior Award, goes to the graduates from the entry-level master's program. Each recipient is chosen by the faculty. They must earn a cumulative GPA of above 3.0, demonstrate leadership and service at both the university level and the School of Nursing through involvement with Student Nurses Association and or Sigma Theta Ta Honor, Honor Society, exceptional work, working with diverse populations, minorities, and underserved communities. The senior awards go to, in the traditional program, Ad Aubrey Koch. In the entry level master's program, the award goes to Jamie Delanda, Yvonne Marillo, Jessica Holden. Here they come. It's a long walk up here onto stage, isn't it? <laughs> The next award is the Della Blackburn Inspirational Award. The recipient of the Della Blackburn Inspirational Award for Christian Nursing is nominated by peers and selected by the faculty of the traditional undergraduate department. This graduate, graduate exemplifies Christian values in daily life, has been inspirational to BSN students and the APU community, and is committed to demonstrating Christian values and behaviors in their nursing practice. The Della Martin, the Della Blackburn Award goes to Gillian Day, cohort 23. Congratulations to each award recipient. We, have, we are so very proud of you. Hello, hi. Well, this is a day that we should rejoice and be glad because this is a day that we're here to celebrate all of you and your accomplishments today. And we thank the Lord that he's brought us here today. Uh, good day. My name is Dr. Lydia Garcia Asri. 
I'm a nursing instructor at the High Desert Regional Campus, and I want to congratulate each and every one of you during this Nursing Penny Ceremony of 2021. What is Sigma? In 1922, six nurses founded Sigma Theta Tau, International Honor Society of Nursing at the Indiana University Training School for Nurses, which is now the Indiana University School of Nursing. Sigma Theta Tau is now known as Sigma. IOTA Sigma was founded in the spring of 1981 by a handful of nursing faculty members, one of which is our very own Dean Ayalesh. On December 4th, we inducted our first in-person induction since the fall of 2019. 40 years later, Sigma is still growing strong. Sigma is among the most prestigious organizations and is the only international nursing honor society in the world. There are more than 560 chapters worldwide with 135,000 members in over 100 countries. Sigma exists to develop superior achievements in nursing. Sigma nurses are encouraged to develop their leadership in their scope of their nursing practice. Sigma also collaborates with several global organizations to improve the health care of the world's people, including representation in the United Nations. Sigma members are leaders at all levels of healthcare industry. The society only extends membership to students in baccalaureate or graduate level programs who have demonstrated superior academic achievement, academic integrity, and professional leadership potential, and to the nurse leader exhibiting exceptional achievements in nursing. Our members include top-notch nursing executives, clinicians, educators, researchers, policy makers, entrepreneurs, and others. Where will you go with the knowledge you have received in your nursing education? Please know that your Sigma chapter is here to help you as you move forward in your nursing journey. Sigma support does not end once you leave this campus. It is the beginning. Some of you will be working in a hospital, clinical, community, or in the military. Whatever platform you practice, there's a need for nursing leadership. You will notice that there are nursing faculty and graduate student nurses who have purple cords. These cords symbolize membership into this prestigious nursing organization. And I would like to recognize those who are Sigma members. Would the nursing faculty who belong to Sigma please stand up and be recognized? Now, is there any member in the audience who are Sigma members, either as alum to APU or to another Sigma chapter, please stand up and be recognized? Finally, Graduate future nurses who have been inducted into IOTA Sigma, please stand up and be recognized. So look around you and see who are all members of Sigma. We all stand united to bring the leadership skills and expertise into your nursing practice. So though, okay, you sat down already, okay. <laughs> So let us know how we can help. Please let us know how Sigma can better serve you. Please connect with us so that we can stay connected. Where will you make a difference? We'll be here at, we'll be here at your local, regional, or global level. Sig IOTA Sigma wants to celebrate with you and with all your accomplishments. Make sure you, we have your current email address so we can stay connected. Like us on Facebook, IOTA Sigma chapter. Don't forget us, we will not forget you. IOTA Sigma is here to help you in your role as a nurse. As our newly elected president, Ken Dion's call to action is to be bold. So let us be bold in our nursing practice. Be bold as a united body of nursing scholars. Be bold in your practice to bring holistic healing to all you serve. And as with your um, pinning ceremony scripture, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen.
My name is Brent Wood, and I'm very blessed to be one of the School of Nursing faculty members. And I have my colleague here, Mr. Everett Brooks, who is the ex executive director of our military and veteran services. So at this time, I would like to invite uh, our military and veteran students that we're going to recognize. If you would please come up here and on the stage. The relationship between nursing and the military goes back centuries. Yes, you'll, you will see the, the, all of the uh, branches of the military represent, flags represented along with our American flag, except for the most recent branch, which is the Space Force. So we'll have to speak with the Dean about adding that flag at a certain point. Um, my father was a veteran in World War II. He served in Patton's infantry and he spent two months in an England hospital recovering. So I'm very grateful for military nurses. My son graduated from here in 2010. He spent five years in the Marine Corps, including a combat deployment in Afghanistan. And interestingly enough, the verse that I sent him and his colleagues was the verse that was selected today uh, about Joshua and going into a new territory with courage. Today, Mr. Brooks, our executive director, will be presenting two things to our students. One is a military coin. Some of you may f be familiar with the tradition of military coins and other organizations. These coins are primarily given by and for members of the military, but also sometimes to non-military persons that are especially appreciated. It represents a brother and sisterhood in a commitment to each other in a common cause. He will also be presenting them with a sash that we ha have that designates them at graduation as military and veteran students. We are proud of each one of them. And I will ask them to step forward. And if you will hold your applause until the very end, um, and then we will, uh, Mr. Brooks will uh, honor each of these students. Let's begin with Christina Alviso. Christina was in the if you would step forward. Christina was in the Army the National Guard Reserves uh, from 1993 to 1995. While she was in there, her military occupational specialty was 76 Victor, which I had to ask her what that was, and she served as a warehouse in, in supply distribution. So the military can't go anywhere without uh, supplies. So that that was an important work that she did there. All right, thank you. Next is James. James Byrne. James was in the Marine Corps from 2006 to 2012. His military occupational specialty was an 0302. He was a rifle platoon commander in Iraq in 2010, and then a, a platoon commander in, in 2008, and also an executive office for HQ Commander 5th Marines Regiment. My son was 25. And then he was an officer selection officer in Raleigh, North Carolina from 2010 to 2012. Thank you, James, for your service. Johnny, Johnny Cow, uh, is a, was a member of the United, he is a member of the United States Navy, starting in 2013, continuing to serve today. Uh, he was a Fleet Marine Force Hospital Corpsman, and then currently a Naval Officer Candidate under instruction. Uh, he enlisted right after high school, was attached to the Naval Hospital in 29 Palms, the Marine Corps Security Officers and the 4th Tanks Battalion, and deployed twice, currently awaiting orders to Officer uh, Development School at the Naval Station Newport in Rhode Island. Well done. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Next we have Rudolph Duran, United States Marine Corps, 1987 to 1992. Military occupational specialties were uh, 0331 for infantry and 8152 for security force. Uh, thank you, Rudolph, for your service. Our students were asked for specific information and given the option of responding in the way, however way that they would like to. And our next uh, veteran student that we want to recognize is Myra Ferites, 
And this is what she said, and I think it sums it up entirely. I served in the United States Army for several years, proud to be a veteran. Next, we have Min Hubbard, United States Air Force, 2007 to 2021. He has uh, involved quite a bit of work, uh, working as a dental assistant, hygienist, supervisor, program manager, and compliance officer. He's been in a variety of places, including Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. Uh, he's also uh, worked in Germany, and more recently in a place close to us, March Air Force Base. Thank you, Min, for your excellent service. And then we have Jonas Linebaugh, and Jonas is also um, uh, in the Air Force from 2013 to 2021, and his MOS involved aerospace ground equipment journeyman. Stationed at Little Rock Air Force Base in Arkansas, sorry about that, uh, for four years, and then later at March Air Force Base here in Moreno Valley, California. Thank you, Jonas, for your service. So at this time, I'd like to ask as, as our, uh, uh, that anyone who has served in our military would just please stand and stay standing. So to our students, uh, veterans, and all those present today, it, it has uh, been said and described that a member of the military is a man or a woman who's written, written a, ch a, a blank check to the United States for up to and including their lives. We are grateful for your service. We recognize the importance of your role in a, in a troubled world. And we just honor you and pray for God's blessing and safety as you continue with your nursing careers and in your lives. Thank you. Note to yourself, bring a piece of paper up, not your phone. All right. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Ruth Milkey, and I'm the Associate Dean of Faculty and Alumni Affairs at Azusa Pacific University School of Nursing. As an aside, I'm a proud alumna of the APU School of Nursing PhD program. Yay? Okay. I have the honor of joining the other School of Nursing faculty and staff in congratulating you on your accomplishment of completing a nursing degree. Okay. My congratulations extends to your families, support persons, I guess and pets now, we've added that one, right? Um, as well, because we know that your success did not occur in isolation, but with the cheerleading and belief of all of those who love you. So, we're gonna have a little more audience participation at this point, and for graduates, at this point, it's not about you. I know it really, for the most part, is about you, but I want us to take a look in this room of all the persons who are alumni of Azusa Pacific University in general. You can stand up, I, I actually can't see, just stand up, let's see how many people are graduates of Azusa Pacific University. Yes, very nice, very nice. And now, of those persons, I want to remain standing, who, whoever is a School of Nursing alumni. Can you see that? And that includes faculty too. Yes, very good, thank you. Yay, we're in good company, aren't we? Okay. So I would like to remind you, or to some introduce you, to your new role as an APU difference maker. Many of you know exactly what you will do next in nursing. Frontline care, community global work, research, teaching, entrepreneurship, but others of you are not really sure. The good news is that God knows. In Ephesians 2.10, I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit. It says, 
For you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which he has prepared beforehand so that you can walk in them. Isn't it good to know that it's out there, just ready to walk into? All right. Okay. So, as a Zusa Pacific University School of Nursing alumnus, you are already a forever part of our APU community. You will show this in your APU apparel or swag, license plate frame, or more practically in a resume or CV when you apply for a new position. As and was stated prior, having APU on your resume or CV is a very good thing. I'm here to request one favor, and is that you be a little bit intentional in your connection. Um, I want you to go, even today, go to your phone, just put in APU Connect into your search engine. Okay, very easy. This is the way that we connect our alumni on ongoing basis back to the School of Nursing. There are resources there to help you find a position, a mentor, and later to, to ultimately give back. And, you, and this room will be mentors um, and participate in our ongoing School of Nursing events. We have APU alumni serving all over the world and who um, regularly participate in those events, even now virtually through virtual platforms. As a note, and as a present for the graduates today, I don't know if you've already received this, but one of our esteemed alumni, Julie Boyd, has written a book about her service and work and life in Kenya. And it's called From Beyond the Skies. And this is a, a pretty riveting um, story that I hope that all of you can read now that you have a little extra time on your hands, right? And it won't be graded, okay. Yay, all right. All right, so the second favor, and I know this sounds far away, but it's not far away to us, is that you put the year 2025 into your calendar. This is the 50th or the golden anniversary of the School of Nursing, and there will be many ways that you can participate with us in that celebration. I will close by saying not farewell, but see you soon. We look forward to seeing God's workmanship in each of your lives as you bless and care for many. Until then, we thank you for being our, our part of our School of Nursing and congratulations. I have the honor to introduce our keynote speaker. We have a very exciting keynote speaker for you. Our Dean, Dr. Aya Tolaners Lesh, will be um, speaking to you today. Now she told me to keep this short, and we, for someone as distinguished of a career, it's gonna be difficult, but I, I promise I will. So Dr. Tolaners Lesh received a BSN from UCLA, an MSN from UCLA, she then went on to become a women's health nurse practitioner uh, graduating from Cal State LA, and she holds a PhD from Claremont Graduate School. Dr. Lesh has always been passionate about caring for the vulnerable, and she's received over $30 million in funding for her program of research focused on care of preemies and following them long-term after discharge and into the home where she founded and uh, ran an infant, child, and family project. She has an extensive research background, uh, has also been very successful in securing grants here at the School of Nursing. But I wanted to highlight a few of the things that she's done as dean for over the past 15 years here at the School of Nursing. It's under her leadership, uh, as she's a very visionary, strategic, wonderful, innovative leader, we started a PhD program. We started a DNP program. We started, or she started, four additional campuses, San Diego, Inland Empire, High Desert, Monrovia. Many of the programs that you're graduating from have, were started under her direction. She also had a passion for international work, and uh, years ago she would take groups of students to various uh, countries. Uh, but she listens to students. She listens to you. 
and it was 300 of you that put a letter on her desk with signatures and said, we want a study away program and an opportunity to go abroad for an entire semester. And thus she began uh, starting South Africa and China and Norway. And we hope to uh, be able to start some of those programs up again. She really has a care and a compassion for students and for family and for her faculty. Um, and so it is my pleasure to introduce your dean, Dr. Ayatollah Nurse Lesh. So that was not short, right? <laughs> that shows you how much they listen to me, right? Well, congratulations, graduates. You are at the end of an amazing journey and about ready to start a new one. Pitting marks a time of transition for you and the opportunity to reflect on just what it means to be a nurse. Some of you have worked as a nurse for a long time. Others are just beginning the experience, the life of a nurse. There are great jobs out there. Salaries are good. Opportunities are huge. You can and will build an impressive career. All this is true. But that is not why we became nurses. There are many other lucrative and attractive careers with financial rewards. But ultimately, we became nurses because we were felt, we were called to, de to heal, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to make whole what has been broken and to restore what has been lost. God has called you in a very unique and distinct way to be his instrument of healing. Most of us can remember when we were called. I was about 14 years old on a bus to school, and the woman sitting in front of me had a grand mal seizure. I was really scared, and I didn't know what to do, but everyone else on the bus just looked away. So I laid her down on the floor on the bus and turned her head to the side so she could breathe and just held her until help arrived. That was God's call to me. I knew then that I would seek to know what to do when others were in distress. Many of you can reflect back and think about the moment when God called you, when you knew you were called to heal, and when you started on your path to become a nurse. But what does it mean to be a nurse, to truly engage in providing healing? We must understand God's mind and God's heart. We are fortunate because our Christian faith provides us with a purpose and an understanding of true healing. The effectiveness of all healing depends on the healing power that God has designed in the human body as part of the created order. The potential for healing is part of God's grace built inside each of you. The body has an amazing resistance to disease. There is redundancy of vital organs, two lungs, two kidneys. There's a constant renewal of cells. As nurses, we facilitate the body's inherent healing. And when I reflect on the amazing capacity of the biological, psychological, and spiritual resiliency of human beings and their potential to heal, it is with a profound awareness that we are made in the image of God. Healing is God means of, God's means to restore creation. And when we care for our patients, we are partners with God. When we discover how God's orderly world works, we begin to understand God's creation. And th this is what allows us to, to develop new interventions and preventions. This is what allows us to reduce pain and suffering. And when we talk about evidence-based practice, we are talking about our understanding of God's mind. God also calls us to wholeness. But what does it mean to work for wholeness? It means that we embrace the concept of personhood as being fully integrated, the spiritual, the physical, the emotional, and the social self. 
The inseparability of the mind, body, and soul is more than a shift in the philosophy today. It is grounded in science. We know that fear, anger, stress are all linked to illness in the body. And God calls us to move beyond being nurses to just the physical body, to be nurses to the whole person. And that includes the spiritual body. Physical care, spiritual care, and mental care are all important in God's eyes. God understands illness, sickness, and death. He has experienced it. He sent his only begotten son to be human and to experience all illness, sickness, and ultimately death for our redemption. So we work for health, for wholeness, and human well-being in a fallen world. But as nurses and healers, we also need to understand God's heart. Being made in the image of God, whose central motivation is love, means that we need to view healing through the lens of love and compassion and deeply appreciate his love for each of us individually. Made in the image of God means that God has bestowed a dignity on us that is non-negotiable. Understanding God's heart calls us to see each of our patients through his eyes, infinitely precious. We are healers not because we are more knowledgeable, more sacrificial, more strategic, or more compassionate. We are healers because God expects us to provide health and healing to those he loves. As nurses, we are called to be in relationship, first of all with God, and through God with our patients. It is a powerful and sacred calling that moves us far beyond the career choice. Understanding God's heart means we also need to understand his compassion. The most powerful phrase was in the New Testament, and Jesus wept. Do not be afraid of tears and sadness. Healing and hope requires the practice of what we call lament. We bear a unique burden as we tend to the needs of our patients and bear witness to the pain. Love for one another links us together in pain. As nurses, we need to be attached to our patients, vulnerable to other suffering. I still remember the patient in my care when I was a brand new neonatal nurse fresh out of school. I watched her die and I sat with her all night. I then remember baby Duran, unnamed, slowly dying until only the respirator sustained him. We mourn for our patients. We remember them. We feel their pain. Your heart will break with the loss of someone you have cared for and the pain and the distress that surrounds you. We also mourn for our own limitations of too many patients and too few resources, our failures and our mistakes. If you are not in partnership with God in your nursing practice, it will be hard to sustain your work. Lament, because Jesus wept as well. Work for wholeness in your own life as well. God desires that you also live in a way that is connected intimately to him, that you know how much he loves you. Pay attention to the warning signs of stress in yourself. A sense of wholeness and peace is lost when you no longer feel safe and in control of your environment. To regain a sense of safety, we must return to the anchoring presence of God within us. Wounded people no longer feel that they are worthy beings created in the image of God. Connection and relationships protect us against the effects of burnout. Focus on the things that enable your flourishing of your spirit and the spirit of those around you. Everything will be all right, not because we will be able to heal everyone or avoid death or loss of function, but because our hope is in our God. We will never be alone and forsaken. So dear graduates, fellow nurses, as you move forward in your career as nurses, let me urge you to do so in partnership with your God, seeking to understand his mind in your intervention and treatments, seeking to understand his heart in your love and compassion, and seeking to understand his redemption in restoring wholeness by fully integrating the spiritual, physical, and emotional healing of those in your care. 
see in each patient the dignity of personhood bestowed on them by their creator and care for yourself with the same love and compassion you would give to the care of others because you too are precious in his eyes. May God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Lesh, for that inspirational, heartfelt presentation. Thank you so much. We will now proceed to the pinning portion of these for these very, very deserving students, now graduates. The act of pinning is a significant milestone and sacred event to the nurse. It symbolizes entry into this special pr profession. And for those who are already nurses, it reminds us of that entrance into our profession. This tradition is performed, at, performed at the conclusion of a nurse's undergraduate education, with the pin itself being unique to the school of nursing from which they graduate. Please refer to the back of your program for a more in-depth history of the pinning purpose and symbolism. We are grateful to be here today in person. We are grateful to be here today in person. Wow, it's been a long journey. So that our faculty who, are, who have vested their time and their energy in the educational development of our nursing graduates can be here to pin you. So let's continue. Traditional BSN undergraduate students, cohort 23 at the Azusa campus, will you please approach and will your faculty approach also? Aubrey Koch. Cameron Infantino. McKenna Berry. Ari Armenta. Haley Humenic. Alana Cicileo. Samantha Capiteo. Marissa Garcia. Claire Wolf. Tara Silva. Madison Bell. Marcelin Tiongo. Caitlin Hoffalina. Alicia Francisco. Rain Salcedo. Ryan Huang. Sarah Christine Pacania. Madison Caroline Gross. Alicia Dwyer. Allison Downey. Emily Nelson. Emma Bargston. Andrea Loera. Trayton Kong. Jillian Ashley Day. Mallory Strom. Janice Kim. Ruby Flat. Alexis Heckney. 
Hannah Eckelbarger. Christina Batista. Bora Lee. Sarah Lee. Braylon Fembea Young. Madison Elizabeth Alexander. Sue Jung. Raymond Andrean. Ian Elijah Reyes. Alyssa Finch. Corina Lee. Priscilla Matos. Alondra Carla Munoz Bonilla. <laughs> Melissa Jeanette Mendoza. Marnie Dawn King. Sarah Gerber. Gloria Namkung. Grace Co. Caitlin Danielle Luna. Isabel Winter Minor Mannion. program students cohort 29 from the high desert regional campus students would you please approach Laura Gannon Diane Brook. Anthony Greco. James Trin. Ariana Hutzbeth. <laughs> Jessica Scray. <laughs> Jaso May Mendia. <laughs> Erica Chase Lick. <laughs> Jonas Leinbaugh. Bobby Aurora. Aaron Trinidad. Darmesh Ramaya. Johnny Cow. <clears throat> Jasmine Chen. Shu Zhao.
Min G. Hubbard. Diana Cervantes. Ruby Ortiz. Rudolph Duran. Richard Lemon. Grant Gable. Andrew King. Transfer Program Cohort 27 from the Inland Empire Regional Campus. Please approach and will your faculty come along? Jasmine Crispin. Richard Kung. Rochelle Green, Lucy Pena, Anna Gomar. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Try again. Anna Gomar. No, not yet. Hold on. Say it here, please. Go ahead. Anna Gomar. Kimberly Acuna. Jennifer Romero. Okay. Jacqueline Espino. Let's hold on a second. Hold on one second. Can you hear your name and walk on Can you guys hear your name and walk on stage? Good to go. Angela Wright Walden. <laughs> Jamaica Reyes. <laughs> Courtney Murray. Desiree Manny Gary. Sylvia Rentera Bermudez. John Ruiz. Treasure Chiwen Nagur. Mubashir Ahmad. Good job. Okay. Students from the Upper Division BSN Transfer Program Cohort 26 from Monrovia, please approach the stage and will the faculty also. Nancy Borato. Michael Hernandez. John Bernabet. Jenna Posias. Leslie Nicole Mancia. Kim Yen. Okay. Juan Gray. Mariah Matthews. Hold on a second. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Come to me. Oh, what is it? Kiruka Okori. 
Xiao Qi Li. Nakiraka Okuri. Ashton Moreno. Christine Von Vondia. Sorry. <laughs> Monica Loera. Gabrielle Barreda. Ro. Justin Akiza. Amber Pierce. Thank you. Thank you. Students from the RN to BSN Bridge Program, cohorts 35B and 35C, please approach, and your faculty also. Perpetua Nuaaiwu. Alvuro Marquez Sauza. Go ahead, I'll tell you when to stop, our pals. Waritsu Marquez Sauza. Cameron Cantu. Fariza Abdullah Kennedy. Sally Nong. Okay, hold, hold on one second. Go ahead, there's somebody available on the other side. Go ahead. May Zah. Hold one more time. We only have two teams, so. Go ahead. Ching Lee. We're gonna just pause for a sec. Go ahead and walk to the stairs if you're ready. Go. Catherine Hua. Go. Kelly Christian. Jacqueline Vicente. Murayu Ginez. Two open spots. Henry Chen. Samantha Tran.
Pinu Lumler. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Open spot. BNA Valdez. Bonnie Fan. Kiani Anis Prophet. in the Entry Level Master's Program Cohort 105 from San Diego Regional Center. BSN program, cohort 36, 112, and 118. If you could re approach the stage and your faculty return. Mireille Tabakian. Sampson B. Bassey. Brianna D'Alba. Christina Alvisio. Cheryl Sierra. Jantra Bunavides. Kelsey Baez. Sane Han. Jackie Hayden. Myra Ferretti's. Andy Kim. Madison Esparza. Oh, 
Two more names, Grace. Two more. Lauren Cruz. Jiwen Lee's. Isn't this exciting? Uh, traditional undergrad, upper division transfer students, uh, three campuses, RN to BSN bridge program, RN to BSN program, many students, many now graduates. We need everyone, but we also need the entry level master's students today. So we're going to start with um, entry level master's program, cohort 105 San Diego Regional Center. Please approach the stage and your faculty also. James Byrne. Alex Herman. Morgan Furlong. Go ahead. Rania Farida. Rebecca Valenzuela. Daisy Lopez. Christ Christina West. Hannah Park. Moxie Rodriguez Jimenez. <laughs> Jessica Francis Holden. <laughs> Cheryl Flores Pisimio. Jacob McMaster. Natalia Cara. Taylor Nicole Burdett. Sabrina Emily Chow. Students in the Entry Level Masters Program, Cohort 106 from the Inland Empire Regional Campus. Please approach the stage and your faculty also. Holly Lamb. Irene Garcia. Yvonne Murillo. Oh. 
Miet Chang. Juan Chavez. Julia Tappelband. <laughs> Peter Vo. <laughs> Tanya Thornton. Tam Nguyen. Susan Cordero. Kimberly Wilgers. Everlinda Hernandez. Petronella Jatonga. Lynette Gacy. Comfort Oyen Roby. Uh, entry level masters, cohort one of four, Monrovia site. Approach the stage. Christian Gonzalez. Brandon Quintera. Amish Patel. Jamie Deanda. <laughs> Kayla Nee Ando. <laughs> Nancy Wynn. <laughs> Alina Duarte. Amanda Mandrich. <laughs> Chloe Clement. <laughs> Diana Yoon. <laughs> Kristen Strawn. Cameron Siddiqui. <laughs> Carolini Irene Christalakis. Martina Gerges Israel. Benita Isayan.
Eden Gedefa. Vanessa Ledizma. Janice Castro. Yadira Danzler. Shannon Madru. Elizabeth Arigal Martinez. <laughs> Melina Rodas. group of graduating fall 2021 BSN students. Let's give them a round of applause. difference in this world. Please welcome now uh, Dr. Elsa Murdoch. She will lead us in the candle lighting and the nursing pledge. excited to be here with everyone in person and celebrating your special day. I'm the program director and faculty member with RN to BSN and we're going to start and talk about the history of the pledge and the importance of the International Pledge of Nursing, especially when you look at this moment in history. Before we begin the pledge and candle lighting segment, I would like to share a portion of its history. The lighting of the candle dates back to the 12th century with Florence Nightingale and the Crimean War. Florence Nightingale was known for her tireless work tending to the soldiers by candlelight. However, it's the legacy of Florence Nightingale hundreds of years later that has influenced modern day nursing school pinning ceremonies. Hospitals recognize Nightingale's impact on healthcare particularly nursing, and began to hold pinning programs in the mid-1880s, during which nurses with exceptional marks received pins. The candle lighting and pledge represent nurses' devotion to the provision of excellent patient care. We make a public declaration of commitment to the profession of nursing and to those we serve as nurses. Therefore, the pinning ceremony is meant to be both a solemn and joyous occasion. Let's begin. I invite any nurses in the audience to join us. If you would like to participate, please walk to the back of the floor standing behind the students, and then our staff can provide you with a candle. So any nurses, go ahead and get up to the back. And nurses and students, please light your candle and hold it in front of you. It lit, okay. I will now lead you in the reciting the International Pledge for Nurses. The pledge will be on the screen. Please repeat after me. In the full knowledge, in the full knowledge. of the obligations I am undertaking, I promise to care for the sick. I promise to care for the sick. 
with all the skill and understanding I possess, without regard to race, creed, color, politics, or social status, without regard to race, creed, color, politics, or social status, sparing no effort to preserve the quality of life, sparing no effort to preserve the quality of life, to alleviate suffering and to promote health, I will respect at all times, at all times the, dignity and religious beliefs of the, patients under my care. the dignity and religious beliefs of the patients under my care, holding in confidence all personal information entrusted to me. and refrain from any action which might endanger life or health. I will endeavor to keep my professional knowledge and skill at the highest level. And to give loyal support and cooperation To all members of the health team, I will do my utmost to honor the International Code of Ethics applied to nursing, and to uphold the integrity of the professional nurse. Nurses, remain standing and please keep your candle lit as we play instruments of peace. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice will cease when we are your instruments of peace. Where there is hatred, we will show his love. Where there is injury, we will never judge. Where there we will speak his peace to the people crying for release. We will be his instruments of peace. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice will cease when we are your instruments of peace. Nurses from the audience, Hello, my name is Joy Pongdara, and I'm the program director at, for the entry-level master's program at the Inland Empire campus. Let us bow our heads for the benediction. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to honor our graduates for all their accomplishments throughout this nursing program. We are so blessed that you have allowed them to be a part of our APU community. We are so grateful for the commitment they have made to serve and care for others through nursing. Lord, as they begin this new journey, may they remember to put you first in their lives. We pray that your Holy Spirit continues to be with them in all their future endeavors. 
and as they go out into the community, help them use the knowledge and skills they have gained as they touch the lives of those who you place before them. May your Holy Spirit guide them in seeking ways to care for the marginalized, the sick, and the dying, and for those who are in need of compassionate nursing care. Let them be your instruments of healing and love in this world. And as we depart one another, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace today and always. Amen. Thank you all for joining us today for this wonderful celebration. <laughs> Graduates and faculty, you may exit the auditorium. Taking chances, I feel a lot like 17.